So my name is Zoe and I'm here to tell you why I'm ignoring your pictures. And I would ask for a show of hands if anyone's emailed me and I've ignored them, but I'm frightened to do that. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Um, so you might be wondering who I am um, and why I've come here to tell you <laughs> why I'm ignoring you. Um, so I am the editor of Hitched. We are a niche wedding planning website. We are one of the UK's biggest wedding planning platforms, but we are still a niche. You know, we cater specifically to wedding planning couples. Um, I am an expert. I'm allowed to say that after Amelia's lovely um, talk earlier. I feel validated in saying that. I'm a subject matter expert on weddings from planning to wedding content creation. Um, I've been doing this for 11 years now. Uh, I've worked at Hitched, You and Your Wedding, Confetti, Bridal Buyer, London Bridal Fashion Week, National Wedding Shows, and more that I'm probably forgetting to mention, but it's always been weddings. Um, and I am a strategist. I oversee the digital content strategy for Hitch. I've done so for many of the brands I just mentioned, but kind of um, outside of a norm, I look after the editorial strategy, but I also oversee our PR strategy with our wonderful freelancer, Erica, who I'm sure many of you know. Um, she works with us very, very closely, and together we've built quite the digital PR strategy for Hitch. And I am here to tell you why I, a digital editor in a niche field where I'm sure many people would like to get links, do not reply to your emails. And that's it, really. So we better um, crack on and talk about it, hadn't we? So <laughs> this is the state of my inbox. Uh, this was a Thursday afternoon a few weeks ago. And you can see there I've got quite a few unread emails. I've got a few drafts. So, you know, I have intended to reply to people and I've started it, but something more pressing has come up, which, you know, it, it does. And I work usually from my dressing table in my bedroom. I work from a laptop, despite many people's best efforts to get me to get more screens and things, because I'm still in the mindset, this is temporary, and I will go back to a desk with a real screen at some point, but I refuse to compromise on my bedroom setup. So I'm working on my tiny screen, and these emails start stacking up in the corner, and I'm getting annoyed, you know? I'm, I'm getting frustrated because we're all busy. It's not like journalists are so busy because everybody, everybody is bloody busy. Um, and I will just dismiss them because I'm busy, I'm doing something. And then they stack up in this little collection. I have got it down a bit from this now. You'll probably be pleased to hear, but that's mostly by deleting them, actually. Uh, sorry. So we all know that digital teams are pressured. You don't really need me to tell you that. You don't need a slide. But, you know, when I started out in journalists, uh, journalism, people would come and visit me at my desk, which seems like such a strange experience now. If someone says to me, do you want to do a desk side visit? I'm like, oh, no, no, thank you. Um, we don't get coffee and cocktails with PRs anymore. I don't really get coffee or cocktails with my own boyfriend. Um, I don't have time to do it with PRs. Um, and teams are getting smaller, and that's one of the reasons I don't have time to go for coffee and cocktails with anybody. Teams are smaller, but targets are not. We all know that feeling. I'm sure. So we should talk numbers. And this is from Muckrack's 2023 report. I have linked it down here. My slides will be, should be already uploaded, but if they're not, I will do that later. Um, so this is Muckrack's 2023 report. On average, a fifth of journalists are getting 50 pitches a week. So that's, that's 10 pitches a day, but they are writing five stories a week. So, you know, that's one in 10 may be getting action. They might be getting their stories elsewhere. We don't know. But that's, it's not great odds, is it? And, and actually, I probably receive around 30 pitches a day, I would say, on average. Um, and there's no way I and my small team can convert that into content. And there's many reasons why we don't convert that into content. And... There are lots of reasons why these pictures don't get action. These are some of the common reasons pictures are rejected. They're impersonal. Nearly a quarter of journalists say they reject pictures because there's no personalization. And that is a big reason why. If I see an email that says, hi, lovely, delete. Um, bad timing. Over a fifth say they reject them as they're badly timed. They come in at 4.59 PM. Sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm clocking out. Uh, you know, or they come in. On a, on a Friday afternoon or things like that, you know, and that's over a fifth of people are saying badly timed pitches. And I should touch here a little bit on where you're trying to get coverage. Do you want niche coverage or do you want news coverage? Because it's different. And a lot of the pitches I get 
I do see them then get picked up in the metro, in the mail online, uh, Wales online, we love Wales online, um, in our own PR strategy. But you have to make sure if you want coverage from a niche website, if you want coverage from Hitched, are you catering to that specific audience or are you catering to a mass audience? Is the site that you're pitching to, do, do they have long-term SEO, SEO goals that you can see? I mean, for us, it's pretty clear what we're trying to do, I think. Um, and are you, are you factoring that into the emails that you send? Are you looking at the key phrases they're trying to rank for and wondering how you can help them with that? Or are you just sending something out blindly in the hope that it's going to get some coverage? News. News sites want clicks. They want instant traffic. They, they have a churn. You know, I've got friends who work in news journalism, and they have a target of how many stories they need to publish a day. So they will action more things than I will. I do not have a target of how many stories I write in a day. You know, I, I don't work like that because what I need to do has to serve a very specific purpose. So there's no benefit for me setting a target. So there's not a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to scoring links from niche websites. You need to be very specific to where you want to land this coverage. So let's see what will leave you on unread from me. These are three recent emails I've had uh, that gave me the most rage. Wimbledon-themed flooring. What even is that? I don't know. Like, is it tennis ball carpet? Is it ashtray? I don't know. I didn't open it. I deleted it. Um, lightweight summer duvets. The best lightweight summer duvets for the heat wave. Am I really going to publish that on Hitched? Do couples planning their wedding really want to see that from us? Does that help me build brand trust with my users? No, it doesn't. It's irrelevant. And then handling disputes at work, like straight to junk, straight to spam forever. Um, we don't care about that, frankly. It's not relevant to me or my audience. And, you know, relevance a word we've heard so much today. Um, Lauren's talk this morning really, really hit home for me. And I recommend, if you didn't get a chance to see it, watching that as well, because it was great about relevancy. Data. Data is a big one. Uh, where is your data from? Have you included full details? And specific, quite specific to weddings. Are you trying to pitch my data back to me? This happens a lot. People will pitch to me. Average cost of a wedding is this much. I'm like, I, know, I, I know that's my study. And I know you haven't credited me. Um, this graph looks great, doesn't it? It's really interesting. But what does it mean? Where's it from? I don't know. Um, and people will say, oh, 76% of people want this at their wedding. But they won't tell me what the actual numbers are. I assume if I get that data and there's no numbers, you've polled your next-door neighbour, your nan, and the five people who watched your Instagram story. And it's irrelevant data, and it will not build brand trust for me. I don't want it. <coughs> Sorry. So here are some of my bugbears when people pitch ideas to me. And I know there's a lot of in digital PR when we're brainstorming our own ideas to go out to press. There's a lot of formulas that work, and they work for news sites. But when you're going niche, if you're pitching me a competition, what good is it for me unless it is for me to run? Because I am not going to send my users to somebody else's site to sign up to enter their competition. Why would I do that? That interferes with my own sign-up goals. Past events. If you send me an email, and, and this happens, or oh, we just want to tell you about the amazing launch of this wedding product we had last night. Your readers will really be interested in this. Well, I wasn't there. My users weren't there. They can't go to it now. I can't go to it. I can't tell them about it except to tell them I wasn't there. Does that really, are they going to trust me and my recommendations if I'm telling them about something I didn't really experience? No. It's happening right now. This, this happens a lot. Uh, today, we're launching this amazing new thing for weddings or, or amazing new lightweight summer duvets, whatever it, whatever it might be. We're launching it today. OK, but I do my content plan 12 weeks in advance because I've got long tail SEO keywords to hit and to ensure that we're maintaining a presence for. I don't have time to disrupt that plan, to pull my team off their work, what they're working on to cover something that's launching today. I can't do it. I need advance notice. And then you've got a weird expert. And I'm sure a lot of people in here will identify with this. And actually, this has been personal learning for me as well, because a lot of brands will, maybe weddings aren't their wheelhouse, but they'll pitch something adjacent to weddings. They're trying. But then they've got you know, your carpet right, and you've got the MD of carpet right giving a quote about weddings. Who cares what the MD of carpet, no offense to carpet, right? It's just the first brand that came into my head, probably for the Wimbledon theme flooring. But um, it's the first thing that came into my head. 
no one cares what they have to say. And sometimes Erica, I'll be like, I'll give you a quote. She's like, Zoe, no one cares what we have to say on this. This isn't relevant to you. Uh, okay, right, <laughs> fine. But you need, sometimes you're going to have to do that to the brand to get the coverage. You have to say, look, sorry, John, um, I know you know carpets, but you don't know weddings. We're going to have to get a wedding expert to come in this. And we do this a lot. We use experts outside of Hitched because I recognize the need for credibility on the subject matter. Thanks, Erica's uh, pushing there. <laughs> and then a couple more. Attachments. I am very busy and I am very lazy. And I will not open an attachment. I just won't. And I really, really hope that my daughter's school is in the room right now because the amount of emails they send saying, please read the attached PDF. <sighs> no. I don't have time to, I use Gmail as well because I have to, and I have to scroll all the way to the bottom to get an attachment. I'm not going to do that. Sorry, just put it in the body of the email or it won't get read. Spamming, obviously no one likes spamming. But if I haven't replied to you, please don't send the same email to me. And people do this every single day. That doesn't mean I'm going to reply to you. That means you are going to get rooted to spam where you will stay forever because the clue's in the name. And the worst one of all, a fake re. Anyone who does this, leave now. <laughs> I don't want to see you. Um, if you have ever sent an email with a fake re, I hate you. Um, straight away, I don't trust you because you've tricked me. And if I don't trust you, I'm not going to work with you. So what I like to see, I should probably talk about that because otherwise I have literally just ranted at you. So muckrack say preferred pictures are one-to-one. -one. We'd all like that. Obviously, that's not very plausible. But if you are aiming for niche coverage, if you do really want links from specific subject matter expert websites, it is worth the time to go in on a one-to-one -one basis and personalize it. They're received before noon. Again, it comes back to that timing point. You know, you're sending them late in the day. You're sending them ahead of the weekend. You're sending them on the day of the thing you're talking about. It's not properly timed, uh, and we don't have time to factor it in. 300 words maximum, because we all have terribly short attention spans now, thanks to TikTok. Um, yeah, keep it brief, keep it personal, and send it with plenty of notice. And then some other things that journalists like, according to me and Muckrat. Exclusivity. This is a big one, for niche coverage particularly. If you can offer me a case study a first-person story, something that my users could actually connect with rather than something that I know has gone out to several different outlets and will likely get covered by them as well. It's a competitive market. I don't really want to be going up against the, da the Daily Mail. I'd rather have something exclusive for me, obviously. Then I'm going to be more interested. And if you follow up politely, not blasting the same email at me repeatedly, but just a polite nudge three to seven days later, and actually my favorite thing is when people send me an email to say, just checking up on this, please let me know if it's not relevant, because then I feel pressured to reply, <laughs> um, and that works. Uh, and I will reply and say to you, oh, sorry, yeah, this isn't right for us right now, but thank you for taking the time. But if you just send me the same email over and over again, I'll never, ever reply to you in my life. <laughs> Um, sorry, but it's true. I'm doing this for everyone's benefit. Uh, but yeah, that, those are, you know, it's really simple things. But if you want niche coverage from a specialist market, what can you offer that will help that brand with its goals and help build audience trust? Because that's what it's all about, really. Thank you. Thanks so much for taking the time. <laughs>